All right, thank you all um, uh, also for the invitation for today. It's actually uh, quite a special day for me to see uh, so many birdshot patients together. Actually also gain some important information from your side. Um, just short introduction for me. I'm uh, living in Utrecht, the Netherlands, and the last roughly five years I've been uh, spending my research trying to understand uh, birdshot a little bit better. Um, because one of the major issues for you is you want better treatment. And, and I can say as a biologist, I'm not an MP, that virtual is very hard to understand just yet. So we need much more research in order to provide eventually even better treatments. Uh, the lady up here is Aniki Rothova. Uh, I actually met her uh, roughly five years ago and she uh, convinced me to do the research in uh, uh, Birdshot. So we had um, already some introductions in uh, some of the underlying biology of this disease. T cells are mentioned, or the immune cells. And basically what it means in birdshot, when we see these typical lesions here, these uh, yellowish dots, um, we see that there's infiltration of immune cells. And these immune cells are called T cells. So basically when you take a look into the posterior part of the eye, you will see these immune cells infiltrating there. And there are uh, several subsets of these immune cells. Doesn't matter which are there at this moment, but we can detect them throughout uh, several layers of the retina uh, and also with different other techniques. So um, when I started at that point in 2010, we knew T cells uh, were doing some damage in the eye, but how this exactly works was uh, um, hardly unknown. So one of the ways we did this, we had the opportunity to use some leftovers of ocular fluid that was used for diagnosis, uh, and we were looking for immune signatures. So we used a technique that was measuring a lot of proteins at the same time, and these proteins are actually used by the immune system to communicate between cells. And we thought if we could detect some of these proteins, maybe that could give us an idea of which kind of immune responses are actually linked to birdshot. So we did this, and actually a roundup of that, what you see was that there are a couple of proteins, they're called interleukins, it's not only interleukins, but just they're up here um, with all these uh, several uh, numbers have been. Basically, it means indeed that T cells are present, we know that. But particularly what was interesting that we found elevated levels of a protein called interleukin-17. It's this one. And what it gives an idea, there's actually a specific subset of T cells um, that produce this cytokine. And what was interesting, these T cells have also been linked to other autoimmune diseases, for example, in the rheumatic disease. So it gives us more of an idea, okay, what could be going on and what type of immune responses might be underlying uh, birdshot. Um, then in the recent years, uh, other uh, studies from uh, the States and also from a recent one from France, actually indeed found that these T cells, uh, even in the blood circulating, were more uh, uh, prevalent in virtual patients. So the, the numbers were a little bit higher. How does ex this exactly relate to the disease? We don't know, but it's starting to uh, at least a little bit unravel what would be going on. Another thing is, um, uh, we already mentioned, for example, the TNF inhibitors. Um, the indication that some proteins might be elevated in birdshot also provides opportunities for future treatments that may be more specific. But I must emphasize there's still a lot of research that needs to be done on it. Also to be sure, because inhibiting proteins in the immune system also comes with a price, as we already discussed. So shortly, birdshot, we have so-called IL-17 immune signatures. It's between brackets because it's, these cells also intend to produce other types of proteins. At least it gives a glimpse. We, uh, shortly was already mentioned the HLA-29. So birdshot patients tend to have uh, uh, HLA-29. Well, well, what is this HLA actually doing? Uh, importantly, T cells that are steered by um, uh, HLA molecules. So basically, a T cell doesn't know what to do unless it's given a specific message by HLA molecules. So these messages come from in cells. So basically, here the messages, uh, the proteins are chopped up and eventually shown by HLA molecules to surveilling T cells. And then they know, well, should I attack that cell or not? The first talk this morning uh, very nicely showed that. HLA-29, uh, although quite highly prevalent in the birds, it is actually quite common. Roughly, let's say, 7% of the Caucasian population is HLA-29 positive. 
So basically having the antigen itself is uh, not, uh, not sufficient to induce disease. <coughs> so what, what we tried to do is uh, then we went looking for uh, investigation in, into the DNA. Basically we want to scan the DNA and see if we could find certain uh, uh, deviations or actually differences in the DNA uh, between uh, participants that had birdshot and, uh, and unaffected individuals. Just to get an idea, would there be a difference additionally to HLA 29? And um, actually, I'm quite uh, enthusiastic to see that you are now uh, starting, you are a, a Birchot uh, society, uh, there's a Birchot uh, biobank coming up. Uh, when we did the research, I had to drive a lot around uh, the country. Fortunately, the Netherlands is quite small, um, so we could incorporate some of these patients. Um, we took samples from the Netherlands and also participants from Spain. And eventually, uh, we were quite lucky that also uh, the researchers from the Moorfield Hospital um, and participants from the, from the bus uh, would give a blood sample so we could uh, replicate our findings. So the genetic data that comes about is quite complex. Actually, the, there are two main messages that come on. One of the things is we zoom into the DNA that is most important for T cells in this sense and also for the immune system is the HLA. So basically what you will see here is a uh, quite complex uh, graph. And what you see here, this is a small part of the DNA where you see several HLA genes. We all have different uh, types and combination of the HLA genes. And the higher the peak, the more related it was to birdshot. And not surprisingly, you see here that it is HLA 29. And we typed that down even more with bigger resolution that we know that the subtype O2 was actually mostly associated with birdshot. Is this surprisingly? No, because uh, 2902 is actually also most prevalent in the normal Caucasian population. Given the idea that A29 is prerequisite for the disease, but itself probably is not diseased. So having HLA29 is essential, but we still don't understand exactly how that works then. Um, so we used a statistical trick to prove this. Now you see the peak is gone. Can forget about that. Importantly, uh, A29 uh, is the main HLA subtype, and there's no other HLA uh, subtypes that might be associated with the disease. Then we found um, actually a new uh, link um, uh, at the, the genetic region somewhere at chromosome 5. So basically, what you see here again is a zoom into a small DNA uh, region with some genes here, and this means there's a signal there's something going on here. And these are all genetic variants that are then more uh, prevalent in uh, um, individuals with birdshot than in unaffected controls. And we replicated these findings in, uh, also in um, the UK. And then we wanted to know, okay, what, what does this mean? There's something going on in the DNA, well, what, what happens? And we figured out with uh, uh, several um, uh, experiments that actually when you have the birdshot so-called risk allele, which basically means that that particular genetic variant uh, is more, more uh, prevalent in birdshot patients, um, actually was uh, correlated with having more ARAP2. So in simple terms, birdshotters intend to have more ARAP2. That's a protein. So what is ARAP2? Um, here you see again a T cell, and here you see an HLA mo molecule. So basically there's a message coming from this part that tells the T cell what to do. Attack, not to attack, do something else. The protein inside here is actually chopped up, and then uh, chopped up to small pieces with a message to the T cell. And an important last step in chopping up and making these messages is actually made by so-called uh, endoplasmic aminopeptidases. You can forget about the word, we just shorten up to Arabs. And here you see Arab 1 and Arab 2. And Arab 1 is also an important friend of Arab 2. And uh, Dr. Ed, uh, James will tell more about that later on. But here you see Arab 2. And it's chopping up the message for HLA. So basically, it can tell what kind of message should be shown by HLA 29 to the T cells uh, uh, in this disease. How this exactly works is quite complex. It's quite new. We don't know. Um, so ARAP2 is a new risk gene. Uh, and I just want to tell you something also on the ongoing research that we still do now in Birdshot. Obviously, we want to pursue and better understand what, what it is, this ARAP2. How does this work in a disease? So basically, what we did, we took some blood from uh, participants and um, we cultured some of these immune cells. And in these immune cells, we want to uh, actually mimic what would be going on into the, uh, in the eye of a, a Birdshot uh, individual. So we express the protein 
uh, from the eye into these immune cells and to see if it could also be chopped up into pieces and uh, shown by HLA-29 to T cells. So we are currently doing that now. So uh, in simple terms, this is the immune cell again and the ochlear protein that's being chopped up by these two Arabs, then shown A29. And with sophisticated uh, experiments, we can then see what kind of protein messages are shown to the immune system. So we do the same thing by inhibiting Arab2, and if the, we can find any differences, maybe this can tell us something about the message that is wrongly uh, given to the immune system. Um, so this is just a, a picture showing uh, that the model uh, is working, that we have all factors in place to study this now. And this was also, I think, roughly six months ago that I uh, um, uh, contacted uh, Dr. Edward James, um, and he's the expert in the Arab biology, and said, well, we need to collaborate at a European level, also uh, another people from Leiden, and uh, we're trying to figure this out in uh, the coming years to get a better understanding uh, what this particular Arab is doing in birdshot. Uh, last thing I want to uh, mention with you is also an approach uh, that we uh, I'm also involved in this project. And this is called systems medicine approach. It's quite a fancy word maybe. Uh, basically it's uh, um, uh, more of a holistic approach of in this understanding what is actually going on to the immune system. I must confess as a biologist, we do research and intend to understand what is going on, but actually we have no idea what is really going on. And that's because the immune system is so extremely complex that the interactions at multiple locations, multiple cells, uh, we, we're talking about really if you would analyze it like big data. So in order to overcome this is using new uh, state-of-the-art technologies and get a good snapshot of what the immune system actually is. So basically what we do, we isolate then cells and then take all different sorts of biological layers and eventually take these data into a, a sophisticated computer analysis to get actually some kind of mathematical model of birdshot. So I had to say it like this, Nowadays, we had approaches where we do uh, experiment one, two, and three, but now we also combine all these data, and looking like this, like a data integration, and we can actually uh, make a birdshot computer model, in which we eventually, hopefully, let's say in the next five or 10 years, even probably can make uh, predictions on how they would respond to a certain stimuli, and hopefully maybe in the future also how they would respond to treatments. So for this, uh, um, uh, we actually take quite a lot of blood, to be, uh, it's over 80 uh, mLs. And in the lab, we have uh, uh, several students who uh, very carefully isolate the white blood cells. These are all subsets of white blood cells. And then we analyze them. Um, and this is more for the scientist harmonic. We take several biological layers. For example, also the DNA, but also the proteins that are all present in these immune cells. And eventually, this is the hard part. We use bioinformatics. And we cannot do this alone. This is very complex uh, mathematics. So we have uh, collaborations uh, with Sweden, Australia, and also the States with people uh, who are very smart, are very advanced in computer biology in order to get a better grip and understanding of what is going on in birdshot. So well, what does it actually mean? Systems medicine approach, a little bit vague words. A simpler word uh, explanation would be to see the follow. We make some kind of biological blueprint of birdshot. So basically, this would be birdshot, and we would investigate all of the different parts integrated with computer biology to eventually get a good glimpse of what is really going on in this disease. And why do you want this? Eventually, um, we want to go to a so-called molecular taxonomy. Basically, we want a kind of biological fingerprint of individual patients. Why? Because we want to get a better understanding of the cause of disease. It might be that the causes might be very different between individuals. Eventually, also a, a, a word that's been used before, this hopefully can also lead to more personalized treatments. Maybe in the future we can predict that you should use treatment A or B or maybe C. And eventually, maybe uh, we find also targets that are specific for birdshot. And uh, this may lead somewhere, I don't think in the near future, but somewhere in the future to birdshot specific treatments. Uh, obviously, I did this research not alone. Um, I want to thank uh, a lot of collaborators in the Netherlands, obviously in the States, but also special thanks to the Bus uh, Birdshot Juviata Society and their collaborators from the Morford Eye Hospital. Thank you.